Good afternoon and welcome to today's uh, energy seminar. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce our speaker today, uh, particularly after the um, great talk we had uh, last year, uh, last week by a clean tech um, entrepreneur uh, from the US. Uh, this this uh, week we'll have a kind of global clean tech entrepreneur working uh, from India. And uh, her name is Shreya Mishra. Uh, and she is the founder and CEO of Solar Square. Uh, to give her a maximum time to talk, I'll just say uh, she was an alumni about a decade ago of the um, Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay, and since then has become a award-winning um, serial entrepreneur uh, with many uh, startup uh, gigs to her credit. And now she's uh, keen on helping India meet its uh, very aggressive targets for solar energy. So she's gonna talk about building India's fastest growing residential solar company. And given the goals, uh, any company that's gonna grow fast and help achieve that uh, uh, goal will be by definition, the biggest residential solar company in a very large India. So Shreya, please uh, take it away. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor John, for having me here. Uh, a very good evening uh, to everybody. I wish I could be there in person. Uh, very excited uh, for this seminar. And I'd love to thank uh, Sarah, uh, Professor John, and Dinesh, who helped me uh, you know, uh, get connected and uh, you know, be here today. Uh, before I begin, uh, I mean, today I'm here to share the story of building uh, Solar Square Energy. Uh, uh, this is my second uh, venture, and uh, we want to be, as Professor John said, India's number one residential solar company and drive mass adoption of rooftop solar in India. Uh, this seminar is very special for me uh, because my journey as an entrepreneur, um, uh, Stanford played a, played a very crucial role. About a decade ago, when I was doing my engineering, uh, I was invited to an entrepreneurship boot camp at the Stanford campus. And I very vividly remember, uh, uh, you know, being uh, so inspired uh, by the energy in the campus. And it is that moment, it is at that moment that I decided to be an entrepreneur. And here I am, uh, you know, with my uh, second, uh, uh, second venture, Solar Square. Today, I'm here to share the story of building Solar Square. Uh, Solar Square is a India-based company. Uh, we want to drive the mass adoption of residential solar in India. Uh, we like to say that uh, we want to uh, heal this planet, one home and one rooftop at a time. Um, the, there are several climate change technologies, climate technologies, there are several energy technologies that are at different points in their adoption, in their technology majority curve or in their commercial adoption curve. Uh, I believe most of the attendees here would know that uh, rooftop solar is a very mature technology. It's been there, solar has been there for, uh, you know, more than 65 years. And it has reached a point where it is commercially very viable, large scale production is happening, so much so that one can easily say solar modules are now a commodity. So uh, today's presentation is not, is not so much about technology innovation, but it is about business model innovation. Uh, we are taking a very commercially and technologically uh, mature um, uh, model, and uh, we are working towards large scale uh, deployment uh, in India. And we believe that homes uh, reducing their reliance on, um, uh, on coal and thermal and other sources of power and in increasing their reliance on solar uh, will be very, very crucial to combating climate change and in meeting India's very ambitious uh, solar, adoption, uh, solar adoption goals. Um, Distributed solar holds an extraordinary promise, and uh, you know I won't spend too much time because I believe rooftop solar is a very well uh, understood technology. Uh, if this is to help us uh, meet our energy needs and uh, help us keep our air clean, large scale deployment of solar uh, in India is what is required. And we will share, I, in today I will share about uh, my journey as an entrepreneur uh, building Solar Square, some of the early success that we have seen. And I'd love to share about what the thinking process has been uh, in building uh, this business. Uh, while Solar Square is a climate tech business, uh, but we are also a very aggressive 
a high growth company. We are a venture backed business. The way I like to say it, uh, we are a not only for profit business. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, um, uh, we are very passionate about solving for climate change. And we believe that, uh, you know, being profitable, being high growth uh, uh, is, you know, sort of the, the, the first ways, uh, you know, to sustainably build, uh, build a business. So yeah, uh, diving right in. Uh, I'm going to keep 40 minutes for the for the session, and then 20 minutes open for questions and answers towards the end. Um, before I begin about our story, I just wanted to do a 101 on uh, on rooftop solar economics in India. Uh, it is absolutely a no-brainer for a homeowner to go solar in India. Uh, on the slide here is a, a, a very simplistic representation of the economics. A three kilowatt system in India would cost about $2,000. It is cheaper in India than anywhere in the world to deploy a rooftop solar. Uh, and this $2,000 system would save a homeowner almost $500 every year for the next 25 years. Now, um, that's a fantastic four year break even. Uh, for most parts of India, depending on different geographies, electricity tariffs could vary and this break even could shuttle between three to six years, but four years is a fairly good average uh, to take for India. Uh, with that, it becomes one of the most attractive economics of rooftop solar anywhere in the world. Uh, in fact, uh, John Kerry, who's a special presidential convoy for climate change, uh, was recently in India and was quoted saying that it is most attractive and cheapest in India uh, to deploy solar. And that's, that's very much true. Uh, this is one of the most attractive economics of residential solar anywhere in the world. To give you a comparison, it takes seven to 10 years for a solar system to break even in, in the United States. Uh, of course, the second benefit of uh, solar is that it's cleaner. It has every home that we take solar helps offset about four metric tons of CO2 every year. Uh, the third reason, uh, you know, while it's cheaper and it's cleaner with electricity, one of the main aspects that it is to be, it should be reliable. Uh, solar, it's a very, very stable technology, been there for, for, for ages. Uh, it's reliable. It works in every season. Uh, it's one of the first questions we get from our consumers. It works in rain. It works in summers. It works in winters. Um, and it's a fairly, uh, uh, it, it gives you power throughout the day because most of the solar systems in India are grid connected solar systems. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about what net metering and grid connected solar systems are. Um, so um, this is the opportunity uh, of rooftop solar for homes in India. It's a 90 to $100 billion market opportunity homes which require more than a three kilowatt solar system, middle class to premium homes in India, almost 30, 32 million uh, addressable homes. Additionally, there are a lot of high rises in India where people live in apartments in metro cities like Mumbai, Bangalore, etc. And 150,000 housing societies additionally uh, are a part of this market segment. Now, whether this takes a decade or two decades or three decades, it is still uh, every year, it's a multi-billion dollar market opportunity ready to be captured. It is eyed by some of the biggest corporate houses in India uh, and by uh, you know, local businessmen and uh, more organized uh, venture entrepreneurs uh, like myself. Um, the, the other very interesting thing about the Indian uh, energy demand consumption is that in this particular target group, the energy consumption per capita per, uh, you know, or per home is increasing very fast. The reason being that air conditioner penetration is very low in India right now, as it's less than 5% uh, compared to you know, uh, more than 50, 60% in, in, you know, in other countries. Now, as as air conditioners become ubiquitous in homes, just like mobile phones and smart TVs, uh, the electricity consumption of these homes will increase dramatically. And so the requirement or the consumption per home will increase. And that's where rooftop solar will also play a very important part in helping people save on electricity expenses and helping India meet, it, meet its energy needs. Um, and so while this is a 90 to $100 billion market opportunity today, at the rate at which per capita electricity consumption is going, um, the solar system size required uh, for these homes will further increase and this market will further grow. 
despite the very large market and despite having one of the best economics of rooftop solar in India, less than half a percent Indian homes have rooftop solar right now. Uh, the market is at the cusp of inflection, but so far adoption has been constrained. And uh, there are three primary reasons for that. <clears throat> and I think um, organized companies have come in and solved for these problems elsewhere in the world as well. And that inflection uh, is happening in India where the rooftop solar market will become branded and organized and you know, top few players will take up uh, you know, uh, 50, 60% of the market share and will drive adoption. One of the first reasons because uh, why adoption is constrained is the lack of trust and transparency in buying from small contractors. Um, India has more than 4,000 uh, small rooftop solar companies. Every city, every geography has, you know, small entrepreneurs who are uh, trying to uh, install solar on homes, on small commercial buildings and factories. But solar is the third most expensive purchase for our target audience. After buying their home and their car, the third most expensive thing that they buy as a family is actually a rooftop solar system, which <clears throat> on average, uh, one, our consumers spend $3,000 on. When you don't buy a $500 refrigerator from a unbranded, um, uh, you know, from an unbranded company, why would you buy a $3,000 system, solar system from, you know, um, uh, an unbranded uh, uh, company where you don't have trust? Uh, when we buy cars, when we buy consumer durables, we are all looking for the trust of brand, for the trust of after-sales service. Uh, in fact, after-sales service and the trust that this company will honor their warranties and guarantees become such a crucial part of our decision-making. And that's where brands come in. That's where the trust of brands come, come in. And that's where markets get, you know, from unbranded, long-tail uh, businesses having a lion's share of the market, the markets get consolidated and few brands uh, dominate. The second reason why adoption for not just rooftop solar, but for any renewable uh, technology uh, remains constrained anywhere in the world is because it, while it saves you cost over a period of time, uh, it, it has high upfront investment. A solar system for our consumers costs anywhere between you know, $2,000 and depending on their consumption can go all the way up to $10,000, $15,000. Uh, small players can't offer point of sale financing. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, uh, while cars were launched you know, many decades uh, before car financing was launched, but the consumer adoption of cars only happened when financing came into the market. Similarly, rooftop solar has been there for many years, but the consumer adoption will, on, will explode only with financing. And that's something we, uh, we believe will be a large, big lever to unlock the demand. The third is that consumer awareness is limited. Um, solar seems like a technical purchase. You can't touch it or feel it like a refrigerator or a television where where it's been around for a long time, you know what you're looking for, you know the price that you're expecting to pay. Uh, because solar is still you know, new and you know, not as widely adopted, it's not fully understood, it seem, the purchase process seems overwhelming. What module should I buy? What inverter should I buy? Uh, do I need after sales service? How much will a solar system save me month on month? What's the economics? What's the break-even period? Uh, that awareness has still not reached a critical mass where everybody on the you know on the street knows what does it cost, how much time does it take to break even, what technologies uh, should we buy? So those are the three main reasons why I believe that adoption is constrained. Uh, our mission is very simple. Uh, we want to drive mass adoption of residential solar in India. Uh, we believe that uh, when we enter a market, uh, the trust and transparency and, um, and the quality of service that Solar Square will bring, it will bring homes, you know, it will convert homes to solar faster than if we were not there in the market. And I believe that's our value, that's our contribution, uh, you know, uh, as a business to the problem of climate change. Uh, we believe that uh, to drive adoption, it requires certain business model innovations which are not yet available in the market. And there will be millions of homes which will go, which will otherwise have not gone solar, but will now go solar because of Solar Square. Uh, we will lead this change, uh, I, I, I believe. And I believe that there will be many companies that will follow and it will 
uh, it will ultimately benefit the market uh, and its maturity overall. Uh, our ambition is very simple. While we drive mass adoption, we want to be the number one residential solar company in India. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we are a climate tech business. We are very passionate about solving for the climate, but we are an aggressive uh, growth chasing venture backed uh, for uh, for profit uh, business. Before I you know, dive deeper into our business model, quickly wanted to cover what we do. Uh, there are residential solar companies everywhere in the world that cover different aspects of the, of the value chain. Uh, what we do <coughs> is we design, install, finance, and maintain residential solar systems. We are not a manufacturer. We don't make solar modules or any of the equipment that goes in a solar system. We are, you can say, the, the retail layer in between, uh, which takes ready-made products, gives, uh, acquires customers, gives them choices of different products, consults them in the process, and then we design and install uh, and provide them EMIs for their solar system. Once a system is, is installed, the life of a rooftop solar system is 25 years and solar is purchased on the promise that it will perform year on year and that it will give you savings year on year. So maintenance is a very important aspect uh, of residential solar that is not understood and that is something that uh, will be very important for the trust on solar as a technology, for the performance of millions of solar plants that will be installed uh, on homes in India. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, India is a very dusty country, unlike the US where solar systems once installed can be maintained <coughs> and clean maybe once in, a, in, in six months. India is a dusty country and the only Achilles heel of solar, model, solar panels is that it, it's susceptible to dust and if dust deposits, the panels cannot get enough irradiation and that reduces their performance. So India has that unique problem where even cleaning of the solar panels is a very important part of plant performance and maintenance. As I said, I want to spend most part of my uh, seminar today in talking about business model and about um, our thinking of how we came up with the business model around this product category. Uh, in no way are we perfect. Uh, we are, we've been doing residential solar for the last, uh, you know, this month would be our 18th month. So we are still a work in progress, very much a work in progress. What I'm sharing is my learnings um, as an entrepreneur and the thinking that went behind, uh, you know, doing what we do and the way we do it right now at Solar Square. But it is still a work in progress. We are still learning. We are still innovating and, uh, and we will still evolve as a company. For creating a winning business in residential solar or in any space, uh, we believe there are three or four things that matter. Uh, I think number one is timing. Uh, you can't be you know, too many years before the market is ready to inflect and you can't be late uh, to join the party either. Um, getting in early uh, means you burn out, you, 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 know, you, you spend too much to create the market, founder fatigue sets in, and that has happened to many companies in India. Uh, many residential solar companies started in 2012, 2014, 2015, before the market was ready or, or you know, to inflect. Uh, I think 2024 will be too late to enter the residential solar market. And we believe that uh, one of the most important things uh, that we think, uh, as I said, we got right is the timing. And I'll talk more about that. The second thing I, I love what Brian, uh, you know, Brian Chesky of Airbnb said, uh, and you know, one of the tips you always give to entrepreneurs is that you need to have some unique insight in the market and build your business model around it. If you don't have it, uh, keep looking for it. Uh, and uh, you know, I will share what are, what are the unique insights, the unique truths that we know about this market. Third is uh, you know, the business model, what's our sales and distribution strategy, how are we doing consumer financing, et cetera. And the last is, you know, of course, one needs to have a team which has the ability to execute. Uh, otherwise, every idea is only as good uh, on paper. So the first question on timing, why now? Why now is the right time to build a residential solar company in India? Uh, on the left side is how the cost of solar, uh, the break-even of residential solar has gone. So just in about 2018, you can see that the break-even was as high as eight years. 
in the last five years from 2015 to 20, dramatic crash in prices of solar modules and solar technologies, uh, thanks to Chinese manufacturing. And the break-even periods have hit four years. Now, while the life of a solar system is 25 years, uh, even an eight-year break-even is not bad. For, but for a retail consumer, for a homeowner, having more than a 10-year outlook on any investment was tough. So theoretically, while even in 2015, residential solar should have taken off, uh, we believe that uh, this, you know, the economics is now more in the window uh, of decision-making for consumers, where 10 years feels, you know, feels predictable, feels you know, near-term future. Uh, while the, the clean energy benefits of solar were always there, the economics of solar has only become tremendously attractive in the last two years. Uh, and, uh, you know, the unfortunate reality is that climate action is not yet mainstream, but saving money is. So the primary reason why homes go solar in India is because they get to save money. And then the second reason is that there's a feel good, why I can save money and also save the planet? Why not? It gives even more push to the consumer. The second very important thing to build a business is to have a stable policy climate. Now, energy and electricity will always be something that will be regulated and there will be government policy intervention. Uh, the only policy on which rooftop solar uh, depends is actually net metering. Uh, net metering is basically your ability to connect a solar system to the grid, wherein uh, the solar system generates power only during the sunshine hours. You produce uh, sufficient power to power your home for the entire day, uh, you know, 24 hours of the day uh, during those sunshine hours, pass the excess power into the grid and seamlessly take it back for your home consumption once the sun sets. This exchange of power from your solar system to the grid, from the grid back for your home, uh, for electrification of your home is called net metering. And this is a free for all service in most parts of the world and also in India. But this policy was always seen as something that could change. You may have read in the news very recently, California is in fact the biggest adopter of rooftop solar for homes, has uh, said that they are rolling back or taxing this net metering facility that's given to homeowners and it's a huge setback to the industry. Fortunately, India has taken a very bold step backing their climate ambition with real policy, hard policy on the ground, where net metering for homes has actually been made a consumer right. Uh, and this consumer right, the electricity right, was only released in India post-independence for the first time. So once it is made a right, we can be very confident that at least for the next five to six decades, this policy is not going to change. And that gives confidence to entrepreneurs, investors, and consumers that from a policy perspective, you know, they are safe. The second thing, of course, is subsidies for residential solar. Uh, India has a subsidy program that's ongoing, and it will continue till December of 2020, 2022. And we believe that in this window, there will be more consumer awareness and more adoption that will happen. Uh, because of the economics of solar, the adoption is not really dependent on subsidies. With subsidies, the four year goes down to three years. So it becomes ridiculously more attractive but it's not dependent on it. Even without subsidies, the economics of solar uh, is, is great. The second thing about uh, you know, uh, building a business is, is what unique truths or what unique insights do we know? I think the first one, uh, as I've already shared, is that homeowners want trust and transparency when they're buying a $2,000 rooftop solar system. Hence, they will not want to buy from local contractors, but from a trusted brand uh, where they have faith on honoring warranties, guarantees, after sales service, and price standardization. Hence, the business decision that we took basis that was to build a B2C, B2C a direct-to-consumer brand. Uh, we toyed with the idea of being a B2B company, of empowering these 4,000 smaller solar companies, becoming the back-end engine that fuels them. But after being in the market, we discussed that that's not the right thing to do. As a B2B company, you are still not solving the biggest pain point, which is consumer trust. Hence, we have to be direct to consumer. The consumer has to know that they are buying from a reputed national brand. The second insight uh, was that the decision to go solar will be seen at least for the next three years, two to three years, till the adoption reaches to millions and millions of homes in India, will be seen as overwhelming. And hence, people will buy, want to buy through referrals, through trusted members of their community, through word of mouth. And that will increase adoption. The business decision that we took, and this was one of our most interesting business insights, was that 
we will unlock demand, demand through social selling and through referrals. Uh, India is a country of hustlers. Everybody likes a side income. If people could earn by referring and recommending and educating their communities about solar and bringing that business to Solar Square, it would be a win-win for the consumer, for the social sellers, and for Solar Square, and for the planet uh, overall as adoption of solar increases. So we are actually planning to build a huge network of micro entrepreneurs who will help us drive adoption, who will be our advocates and champions on the ground and help India reach the critical awareness levels. The third insight uh, was that this is a land grab opportunity. A home that goes solar today is gone for the next decade. At least for another 10 years, he is a consumer logged in with the company. He will go for replacements to the same company. He will go for batch, adding batteries to his system for, to the same company. At least for the next 10 years, he is not going to look for another service provider for his rooftop solar system. Hence, being early to market, capturing early customers in every geography of India gives disproportionate advantage uh, to companies uh, for the future and replacing those companies becomes tough. Hence, uh, given this is a land grab opportunity, uh, we believe that we need to raise capital, we need to grow fast, we need to get those early adopters in the market fast. And then on the back of those, we will become irreplaceable and we'll have uh, you know, a very defensible um, uh, uh, business in the future. Uh, speed can be a moat in network businesses and in land grab businesses, like uh, speed to market is a moat for an Ola or an Uber. Uh, similarly, speed to market is a very important moat for a residential solar business. Now this beckons the question, how do we know that our insights are correct and that they're working in the market? Uh, we are big believers of perfect your model in a small market, pilot the business, and then only scale. Uh, because the costs of you know, figuring out once you've scaled or making too many mistakes once you've scaled is too high. So we took one market in central India and uh, the pins that you see are all the homes in two tier one cities of India, Bhopal and Indore. Uh, well, how do we know that our insights are correct? How do we know that the market is getting branded? How do we know um, that word of mouths are working, social selling is working? One in every three homes that went solar in the last one year in these cities chose Solar Square. That's a 33% market share right at the get-go as we entered the market. There are more than 100 operators in this market and we have already taken up 33% market share. Why? Because consumers wanted the trust of a brand, the trust of after sales service. The second thing why we know that this is working is because of the momentum that we've had. Uh, as I say, as of today, we are India's fastest growing residential solar company. Our first 100 homes took about 120 days to acquire, more than uh, about you know, a year and a half ago. Our latest 100 homes have taken 11 days. Uh, and we believe that very soon, uh, you know, a home uh, would, would be, uh, you know, within the next six months, a home would be going solar with us uh, every, every hour to two hours. The third is, you know, wh why we know that community trust matters. Every 10 homes that we acquired through digital marketing or through, you know, marketing activities, they got us six more homes via referrals. Uh, and I think that really shows that's more than 40, 45% of our business coming through word of mouth. And that really shows that it is these early adopters, it is these solar champions who will create trust and awareness and adoption in the market. The third thing uh, I'd like to talk about is now our business model. Now that we have these insights, now that we know that the timing is right, what's the, what's the business model? What are we really doing differently? Uh, and I'll cover it in four aspects. One is the customer value proposition. Second is what's our customer acquisition strategy? Uh, because as I said, this is a land grab business. Uh, third is consumer financing. And fourth is something that we spend a lot of time on after you've cracked product market fit is how do you scale this? How do you build scalable operations uh, in this business? If you look at the image on the right, that's a typical home in India. Uh, unlike the US where we have sloping roofs because of snow, India has flat roofs. And we like to use our roofs. Kids play on our roofs. We like to uh, drive, you know, go, you know, dehydrate fruits and vegetables on our roof. We like to dry our clothes on the roofs. We like to fly kites on our roofs. Given that, there is some amount of civil work that's required to install a solar system. You see these solar systems, a raised solar roof uh, in a way that we create. Uh, that creates an it creates a, a creates you know 
it's tougher than installing solar on, on shingles or sloping roofs the way we have it in US, but it also has created an opportunity uh, for Solar Square on how uh, we do things differently. So in terms of customer value proposition, uh, the first value proposition is that we're the first company in India to come out with a promise of one day solar, which means we complete our installation in a day. Morning 9 a.m. our crew hits the home and evening 5 p.m. they're out. Very inspired by Jeff Bezos and his one day delivery. And uh, that's how we came up uh, you know, with uh, the idea of uh, building one day solar. Uh, quickly, the second thing is how we install these solar systems on the roof. As I said, these are flat roofs and they require you to create structures and then install solar modules on top of it. Typically everywhere in, in, in the market, in India or in all flat roof countries, there's a lot of civil work, manual welding, cutting of pipes and creating that structure and then installing solar roofs. How do you do that at scale? How do you customize and you know how do you have control quality if labor is installing and welding these structures on site on millions of homes it's impossible to maintain quality it's impossible to maintain safety standards uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, you know things to note here is that each solar module weighs 27 kgs and is made of glass if there is any structural integrity issue you know, with so many extreme weather phenomena, cyclones, heavy wind speeds happening everywhere across the world, if even one solar panel flies off the roof, it's an immediate risk to life and property. It's 27 kgs per panel and made of glass. Hence, we developed prefabricated solar structures. We're the first company in India to do that. Uh, these are made using precision manufacturing in factories. We have the scale to have invested in this product, product development. Uh, these are seamlessly assembled. You know, our inspiration here was IKEA. Let's build something that can just be nut bolted together. No welding, no cutting, no drilling, no risk of manual error. This is all prefabricated and installed uh, on your roof pretty seamlessly. Uh, no dependence on you know the technical skill of uh, of the person doing it per se. Now, uh, why that is important is because as we are building a brand, it gives us that trust that you know we're doing this safely and. Uh, you know, everywhere and quality, maintaining quality standards has become, uh, you know, very manageable. The third thing, as I said, was that residential solar was largely operated by small local players where they did not have enough scale or networks to pro provide after sales service, which means that if your solar system went down four years later and you call your service provider, there's a very good chance that he will not answer your call or he will not honor the warranties or he will not help you with a replacement or if he does that he'll, he'll take weeks to do that because we are growing market after market trying to build density in every city that we operate in uh, we actually offer a five-year comprehensive maintenance to all our consumers and because solar is bought on the promise of generating savings, ensuring that it performs at its maximum efficiency year on year is only possible if the company is consciously maintaining uh, the solar system. So we have in our, in our head office, we actually monitor over mobile applications. We actually monitor performance of every solar system uh, uh, regularly. And that's how we know that they're generating properly, uh, that they're being maintained well, and that if there any intervention is required. So those are some of the, the, the things with which we are winning in the market right now. Now, some of you may think that, you know, can prefabricated structures be copied? Can five-year maintenance be copied? Yes, absolutely. But I think there are short-term moats and there are long-term moats. Uh, winning uh, in the short term, winning in the long term, you know, it's a great articulation I recently read in the book. And business model and moats can be short term moats or long term moats. These for now are short term moats. Our scale and our uh, micro entrepreneur or social seller network will be our long term moat. The third aspect was, cons was consumer financing. This is still something that is work in progress for us. Residential solar companies like Sunrun in the US, Sonova, Vivint, Solar City. Um, uh, erstwhile solar city now tesla solar all of these companies have grown on the back of financing and we believe that financing will play a very very crucial role and will be a moat um, uh, you know because only the large companies can uh, you know get financing at scale for homeowners uh, we believe that as i said financing will unlock demand many many fold um, the choice that we are toying with right now is whether we should be a lending marketplace pretty much like uh, companies like Goodleap 
or Sunlight Financial in the US, which have banks and lenders on one side and you know, have developed a mobile application with which they match lenders to consumers. Um, uh, this works in more mature credit economies like the US where credit penetration, credit card penetration is very high, where um, there are, uh, you know, where lending is very, very mature. India is very credit under penetrated as a country. And so we are wondering whether we should, you know, whether our market is mature enough for us to build a marketplace or whether we should take on the challenge of building a captive NBFC given what a crucial part of our moat and uh, customer adoption this is. So this is still work in progress. So yeah, that's uh, about, that's the end of our journey at Solar Square. And uh, while I, I thought I'd, you know, I'd make the last slide about challenges in India, but I am uh, truly very optimistic. And I believe that there is, a, solar holds an extraordinary promise in India and India will be an example in the world on adoption of uh, rooftop solar for, homes, factories, everything. Uh, I think a few things uh, that we can do well is the government permitting process. After so many years, the US has now, the US government has now launched an app uh, which allows homeowners or solar companies to do all the government permitting around residential solar uh, very smoothly online. And we believe that will happen in India very soon. Uh, our government is very bold and ambitious about climate change and they are bringing about policy changes on the ground. Uh, we believe that right from manufacturing of solar modules to net metering policy, India will be very, very, um, uh, very promising and a very, very a huge hotbed. Climate action will become mainstream, not just in India, everywhere else in the world and solar and EVs will definitely benefit from that trend where climate action uh, and you know being living sustainably will become a trend and yeah i firmly believe this will be the decade of climate businesses not just in india but everywhere else in the world and you know capital will flow in smart entrepreneurs will pursue it technologies are ready uh, we have few years uh, before irreversible climate change happens as we all know it uh, just about a decade i believe and so uh, this better be the decade of uh, of climate change Thank you. Uh, Shreira, that was absolutely uh, fabulous. Uh, it reminds me of a talk I heard about uh, 25 years ago through the, uh, what we have here, a seminar still go ongoing called Entrepreneurial Thought Leaders. There was a young kind of wild and crazy guy, not that you're wild and crazy, but he was named Jeff Bezos, who was, had this little book distribution company. And he did uh, come down very heavily as you did on uh, what I would, uh, what the strategy theorists would call the evolutionary theory. You do small experiments. If they work, you double, triple, multiply by 100. Uh, and if they don't, you kind of cut them off and move on to something else. So uh, I do see in your, uh, at least a piece of your very uh, detailed uh, game plan here. And thank you for sharing that with us. I assume the reason you're not afraid of giving away some of the details is you'll outpace anybody who tries to catch you. Now, I do, I do know a couple of companies that when you ask them, uh, are you afraid about being so public, like your competitors could be online right now watching you, that the, the argument is usually we're ahead and we don't uh, plan on uh, losing any ground. But on the um, target uh, markets, uh, market segments or areas, there were a couple of questions about uh, do you pick, and you did give the one uh, test case example, is there a strategy for which, which regions to and which submarkets to expand into that you do even before you start collecting feedback from out the market about how things are going? Right. So uh, right now, uh, the scale that we've achieved is from a single market. And I guess uh, uh, that's what we wanted to do. Uh, the depth of residential solar is so much in any city, any, any geography that we get into. Uh, we picked one market and for the last almost, uh, you know, for, the, for 15 out of 18 months, we were just in one market of India. Uh, and we really perfected uh, while being in that market. We probed the business model. We raised $4 million in venture capital very recently for our business. Uh, it's our seed round. And uh, that's what now gives us clarity of thought to proceed further. Um, unlike tech businesses where, uh, uh, where I guess, 
speed to market is just ridiculously fast. I believe that, uh, you know, not as many entrepreneurs uh, are, you know, uh, out there building uh, residential solar as, you know, probably they were building Ola, uh, you know, uh, Ubers of India or Amazons of India, you know, there were like so many people trying it at a time. Uh, I would say we are, uh, you know, we are sort of, uh, the, the category is still a bit under the radar, uh, but holds a lot of promise. And so uh, we were confident that, you know, we, we could spend that one, one and a half years in one market perfecting our model. And uh, now we're ready to double down uh, and we're ready to scale. Great. Uh, another on the other side of the ball, the, another uh, set of questions regards uh, your inbound because you don't make the equipment yourselves. Where do you get your solar cells from? And do you, in the world as we know it today, uh, given everything, including COVID and trade wars, um, how do you think about supply chain uh, right. challenges? How do they work out from your side of the uh, business? Absolutely. So we are, uh, uh, when it comes to brands of solar modules and different technologies that exist on modules and inverters, we are a technology and brand agnostic company, which means we help a consumer get matched to the right solution for his home, uh, whether, you know, what's what technology or brand of module, what technology or brand of inverters does he require for his home. So we are agnostic in that sense. Uh, the reality of our business is that globally, for modules, the world is dependent on China, you know, with, with the large scale production that they're doing. And uh, we did see uh, quite a few disruptions, uh, you know, over the last, uh, you know, 18 months with two waves of, and a third wave going on right now of COVID. Uh, yes, there were supply chain disruptions, but uh, I am hoping that we are at the end of COVID. I don't know if we're at the end of a trade war, but, uh, the second thing is that India, Indian manufacturing of solar modules is actually now uh, quite, um, you know, quite aggressive as well. And there are, uh, you know, brands like Panasonic, which have uh, setups to manufacture Panasonic modules in India in joint venture with, you know, some, some Indian players. So there is that interest on India. And I believe that uh, module manufacturers are not married to their domicile. Uh, I see that as India starts to tax some of the imported modules, uh, one Indian manufacturing will get an impetus, but there will be several global companies which will set up manufacturing units in India, just given how large the market is uh, and how fast uh, you know, uh, the, the solar adoption is going in India. So I don't really worry about supply chain disruptions as much. Um, they can be uh, irritant in the short term, but I don't see them being a deterrent uh, in business building. Great, another set of questions, and I may actually read one of them because I think it's particularly uh, pointed, has to do with net metering and how that's gonna play out in India. It's from uh, Panum Agrawal. But it's in California, net metering policies are controversial, especially in terms of equity and accessibility. How do you see that playing out in India? <laughs> uh, that is, will solar in India be available only to those who can afford it and have their own homes? Or right. have you already thought about the social and environmental justice issues? I, 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 bet, I bet a lot of money you've already thought about this, but I, it's, uh, you didn't actually stress this in your talk. So I think it's a great question. Right, right. So net metering uh, is when I shared that why now, why is now the time to build a residential solar business, I touched upon policy environment being stable. Now, in California, uh, net metering is being taxed, uh, you know, for homeowners, those who can afford um, and uh, and I'll, I'll cover the socioeconomic issue later on, but just firstly on the, on the, on the policy aspect. In India, I think um, uh, India used to have these, you know, uh, state-wise policy changes and these irregularities in net metering. Uh, one fine day, uh, a state would wake up and say, oh, our discoms are bleeding too much. Let's start taxing net metering. And that could happen. Uh, you know, before 2020, but in December 2020, the Indian government released the electricity consumer rights for the first time post independence, where net metering is now a consumer right. So you can pretty much say it's like a constitutional right. Nobody can take that away. No matter who the homeowner is, net metering up to 10 kilowatts is now a right. So that way, policy climate is stable. Now, to the question of uh, net metering, I mean, the, uh, you know, Lower income households don't have roofs or cannot, you know, you need a, you need a solid 
uh, um, uh, you know, roof to, to be able to install a rooftop solar system. Uh, of course, in rural areas and in lower income households that, you know, their roofs may not support solar, they may not be able to afford solar uh, and things like that. I believe that solving in, in India, at least electricity is highly subsidized for lower income households. So it's actually the middle income and high income households who have been paying for electricity for the lower income households. Uh, it's a huge vote subject in India. Uh, yeah. So electricity, you know, is, is actually um, this huge problem of theft of electricity and non-payment of bills and huge problem of subsidizing electricity for farmers, for lower income households, uh, and, you know, uh, for other special, um, you know, industries. I believe that the role of rooftop solar in combating climate change and climate change as a problem is way more urgent to solve and hence we must, policies must enable adoption of solar in the next decade and two, however they can. Problems around socioeconomic justice can be tackled differently. I think these are two conflicting forces. Uh, and one can't say one is more important than the other, but without net metering, nobody will adopt solar. Simple as that. So we're not fighting climate change. We are not using a technology that can make us, uh, you know, meet our energy requirements, that can keep our air clean, that can help us solve for climate change. I mm -hmm. think it is urgent and important to do that now and tackle the issues of lower income households and how to solarize them later on. I firmly believe there will be a huge secondary market for solar. After 10, 15, 20 years, these homes will discard their old panels and adopt new technology. What happens to those panels? Once the, the primary market becomes so big, the secondary market will be big enough and entrepreneurs will come in and deploy these old solar panels on lower income households, on government schools. And that's how the cycle you know, will sort of propagate and everybody will benefit. But for now, ensuring adoption, wherever it can happen, I think is important. Yeah, it's interesting because I was just reading that even Tesla has put a lot of effort recently into secondary, establishing secondary markets. And I'm assuming it's for the same uh, reason. One last uh, set of questions. We, we evidently have some solar um, entrepreneurs, particularly based in California in the audience here. And okay. you did uh, you did give a, a nice shout out to Stanford for inspiring your entrepreneurial spirit. Were there any particular you mentioned a few? Were there any particular companies that you thought were exemplary that you wanted to borrow some of their magic or you know put together a few of them uh, pieces from a few different uh, different ones? Right. So I'm actually. Um, uh, uh, so when I visited for the entrepreneurship bootcamp, it was done by the undergrad students, the master, I, I, I guess the, uh, the engineering undergrad students and they had conducted this entrepreneurship bootcamp. One of the, uh, the parts of the two week bootcamp was visiting startup offices. So back in 2012, not, and you know, that's when Airbnb was really early. The first office I vividly remember being taken to was the Airbnb office and wow. then Dropbox, Twitter, Tesla. We did go to the Tesla uh, office. Uh, you know, one of the speakers was Vinod Khosla. Elon Musk uh, was there too uh, as a speaker. And uh, all of that, you know, was, uh, um, uh, you know, we learned about, I heard about renewables for the first time there, but what really I took away uh, from, uh, you know, uh, from my visit to Airbnb is, how powerful a company can become if it if it creates income generation opportunity for uh, for people the more people invested in your success i believe the more successful a company is that's where you know in any even in my previous startup and in this startup uh, we have this aspect of having business partners or micro entrepreneurs who can make money through our business or generate income through our business that's where the angle of social selling came in because if we could, you know, just like Airbnb enables homeowners to generate uh, income, if we could enable climate champions and early adopters of rooftop solar uh, to generate income by, you know, getting more people to go solar, uh, we believe it's just such a win-win and create such a positive momentum for the business. And so I guess that was one of the things that I took away. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully Solar Square. you know, I, I think this is something I will do till I am 70, 80. But in case uh, there is a third business uh, down the line that I built, I'm pretty sure that I will again 
uh, have an angle of micro entrepreneurs and business partners uh, and having ha having individuals uh, create income at solar square in the next three to four years we want these climate champions to uh, to earn 10 to 15 you know generate 10 to 15 million dollars in earnings through our platform um, and i believe that's you know serious income generation for community great on that note i'm sure the uh, students watching online or the ones that are going to meet with, with you also online uh, are, are really inspired and anxious to uh, put you uh, in the list of illustrious successful entrepreneurs that you mentioned just now. So thank you so much uh, for joining us today. We really appreciate it, especially at 5.30 a.m., folks, uh, to start to talk, which probably means you got up an hour before that to get ready. Uh, so I know you're certainly someone who seems to be well prepared at all times. So thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you so much.